So we're going to do a little exercise just to, just to kind of try and get a bit clearer about these two distinctions. Everyone got a pen? Or a straw? <coughs> or a mobile phone? Or a bottle? Anything, anything you can hold in your hand in front of you. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly give you some instructions and then we'll do the exercise. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask you to study your object, my pen, with your five senses. We'll do that for 30 seconds. Then I'll ask you to put it down and we'll ask you how much of that you can remember by closing your eyes if you're happy to do that. Okay? All clear? So we'll do 30 seconds. Use all your five senses if you want. If you have a pen like me, you might want to avoid the taste. But off you go, 30 seconds. see them, preferably. And if you're happy to do this with your eyes closed, you can close your eyes. If you have to do your eyes open, you can open your eyes. It doesn't make a big difference. And now just for 15 seconds, see how much of that you can remember or recall. I will keep the time. Is the exercise done? What kind of things did you notice during that exercise? A lot more awareness of <coughs> what I actually had hold of right. than what I had, what I had originally. Right. <coughs> so it's almost like, because you have a bottle, it's almost like you've been drinking out of it on autopilot, yeah. and then the minute we kind of go into the here and now, you're a lot more aware. So good, good noticing. Mine was I was much more focused kind of on the the, the object itself with my touch actually and it was quite it was quite hard and felt quite cold but I actually I kind of use one every day all day long and I write some quite powerful stuff with when I use one related to my work. Um, so it tells that for me tells a lot of stories of people's lives. But it's it felt so you, so, you were, yeah. so your five senses kind of told you that it was cold. To be touched. Yeah. Oh. Anything else people notice? I noticed, I noticed that I was using the straw for more things in my mind. About 15 seconds seemed a long time, so when I'd recreated everything, I was going on for doing other things. Or I noticed my mind was doing other things. Right. So you also notice your mind could wander off. I guess it's probably fair to say it usually when I do this exercise, everybody can see it. Yeah. Probably everybody can feel it if you think about it. Like, could, every, could everybody like remember something about it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, in my experience of doing this exercise, people are usually very clear about the difference between the second part of the exercise when you're thinking about it and the first part of the exercise when you're actually using the five senses. Is that difference really clear to you? Yeah. yeah. So again, here's something that's very simple, right? Just like this. It's a very simple idea. But, but maybe in practice, this thing's not such an easy idea either. Can you think of a, perhaps some examples when it's not so easy to be clear about the difference between what's in your mind and what's in front of you? When it's um, looking at one of your values, it, you know, to be able to um, go towards those values, I find that my, you know, my maybe some avoidance will come up, and then I might not. I'll just put it off. Right. Yeah. Ooh, there's another value. Yeah. yeah. Right. <coughs> so what what's going on in your mind that would lead to that behaviour? 
So let's say. Um, if I'm if I'm sort of worried about what I'm wanting to do, the fear of right. sort of fear of. Right. So you might so you might start thinking about your values. Yeah. And then you start kind of to get a picture of it. Yeah, visualize it. Then. How and it may be. Yeah. And it starts to become quite real. Yeah. Kind of like it's almost like you're in there rather than in here. Yeah. And if you get caught up in here, then it's easy to do something. Can people kind of understand that experience, <clears throat> getting caught up in your mind? I, I do, but what I find is often <clears throat> that stuff can kind of take you into fantasy stuff as well, and it's probably not the reality of actually if you do dealing with right. what so, you want it to do. Right. So sometimes, sometimes what's in your mind is a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it can be worse or in your mind. Right. I like think about stopping smoking, right. you know, all the fantasies that come along with that, uh -huh. like the anxiety I'm going to suffer and this and that and blah blah blah. And actually, I stopped for two weeks and it was brilliant. Right. <laughs> so the actual act right. of doing it was easier than my fantasy was right. than the fear of it. So your mind says, "Oh my God, this would be really terrible." Or you buy into your mind. What's the behaviour? If you buy into that, it's going to be terrible. Or how it's just smoking? I, I, I continue to I continue to suffer, yeah, and I continue exactly. to smoke. Yeah. Whereas when you're in the here and now, and you know it's not like that, it perhaps increases the possibility yeah. that you might move in a healthier direction than you're smoking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So the, the trouble with this is is that before we know it, very often we're over here. And if we spend time thinking about some of these behaviours and what goes on in our mind, I'm sure for each behaviour <coughs> there's something going on in here which drives that way because we're not in the present moment. So this, this approach is really about that. It's about learning to sort of detect the warning signs from over here or over here and come into the present moment so that you can disconnect your autopilot Start going back to values. That is it. So it's not like a it's not like a degree in learning some fantastic new sort of technology. It's very very simple. It's these two things. Very simple idea. It's very hard to do. So it requires practice. So it's more like lifting weights. It's more like going to the gym than it's like going to the university. Is it making sense? Yeah, just kind of been relating it to a client and their situation mm -hmm. and their behaviours in relation to their values. Can you tell us about it, that? It fits very well. Do you want to tell us about that? <coughs> um, it's a particular client who's um, values his family and children, that kind of stuff, his behaviours, so the wrong side of the law, right. um, if we like. Right. Okay. Um, when you kind of have sessions, he acknowledges actually in the here and now that his lifestyle isn't healthy and does keep him towards prison and those kinds of consequences. Um, but his behaviour contradicts all the things that we have in one to one. Yeah. So when he kind of gets back in a different setting, yeah. autopilot takes over. So as he walks out the door, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So common. Yeah. Okay, well thank you very much. And that's the end of the group.